Hi, is that Ross? Hi, it is Ross, yeah. Hi Ross, my name's Mia, I'm a police officer with uh, Warwickshire Police. Hello. Um, we've just come to your mum and dad's house. Um, we're just looking for Megan, she's been reported missing. Have you well, seen her yeah. at all? She came on Friday, I've been, talk I've been trying to call her loads. Um, she came on. She came on Friday for about an hour. Yeah. Then she, she, she left about nine-ish. Okay. I went to, went to McDonald's. Yeah. And then she could give me a call or a text when she got in. She never, she never did. That's 30-year-old lab technician Ross McCullum talking with a Warwickshire police officer in reference to 23-year-old Megan Nubra, who had been reported missing a short while earlier on that very same day. Although Ross gives a story about his and Megan's whereabouts on the Friday that had just passed, police suspect that he's keeping something from them as he had been the last known person in contact with her. What Ross didn't know was that by the time this call had been made, police had already accessed Megan's mobile phone, which had been located in some undergrowth off Hermitage Road in the village of Whitwick, Leicestershire. All evidence at this point led to Ross knowing more than he was letting on. Believe it or not, Ross and Megan didn't know of each other's existence prior to June of 2021, but that was all due to change when Megan was about to do an audit in a laboratory at her workplace, Ibstock Brick, a brick manufacturer in northwest Leicestershire. Megan, who had recently joined the company's HR department, along with some others, had been carrying out a data protection and privacy assessment involving paperwork and files stored once again in the company's laboratory. It was here the two crossed paths for the very first time. To say they got on like a house on fire would be an understatement. This is what Joe Howard, a senior lab technician, had to say in regards to the pair's relationship only weeks after they had first met. There was a time I observed Ross and Megan at work throughout July of 2021. Megan would come into the lab and they were almost acting like a couple. On occasion, I caught them hugging and kissing in the lab itself. Ross was a reliable worker. However, around the time he started seeing Megan, his behavior changed. I assumed that he had stopped taking his ADHD medication. He had done it in the past, so I recognised the behaviour. Immaturity in teenage-like would be the best way to describe it. He became boisterous, swearing at people and using highly inappropriate language. It isn't clear why Ross stopped, but certain ADHD medication can lead to problems in the bedroom, so I'll leave you to put two and two together seeing as a new relationship had started to develop. Other than the testimony from Joe Howard, there isn't any other public sources to paint a picture of what the pair were like at work. The same could be said for outside of work, Megan's family nor Ross's were aware of how close the two were. It wasn't kept a secret, but it wasn't serious enough for their families to know of their presence. That was all about to change on the 7th of August 2021 though, and when the families were finally aware that the two were an item, one would be dead, the other facing decades in jail. Friday the 6th of August 2021 was like no other for Megan. Wake up, go to work, come home, and enjoy the weekend. Nothing in particular was planned for that summer's evening. She was going to spend some time at home with her parents. That's where she lived. However, that would all change when she received a text message from Ross. Want to meet up at mine tonight? My parents aren't home. So she got ready and told her family she was off for a walk down the park with a man from work that she called Ross, and off she went. But as you know, she wasn't going to the park, she was heading to Ross's home. This is the last time she would ever be seen alive on camera. Shortly after 8pm, Megan arrived at Ross's home in Colville, Leicestershire, a stone's throw away from Ibstock Brick. We don't know any specifics of what happened when she arrived, but what we do know is that within the first 40 minutes, yes, the first 40 minutes, she would be attacked by Ross McCullum in the front room, an attack that would leave her dead. He had strangled her, but to make sure the job was finished, he wielded a knife from the kitchen and hacked away at her neck in an attempt to decapitate her. He failed in doing so, but caused 14 stab wounds in the process. Now you might be scratching your head thinking to yourself, how? Why? Well, it seems that Ross might have been hiding something away from everyone, a sick fantasy that eventually played out when Megan arrived. His actions following her death lay out his true intentions and even a potential to go on to kill again. 
An initial cleanup of the front room was underway. Using bed sheets and towels, he cleaned up as much of the crime scene as he could before discreetly placing Megan back into her own car, along with a bunch of personal items and everything used in the murder. In the midst of attempting to shift all the physical evidence away from his parents' home, Ross called Megan's phone various times and left messages to distance himself further. Just prior to 9pm, Ross left his parents' home on Windsor Close and headed in the direction of Loughborough College. Phone analysis would reveal that at around 9.04pm, Megan's phone first entered Hermitage Road, roughly one mile away. It wouldn't leave that location. Over the next 20 minutes or so, Ross continued his journey towards Loughborough College, passing by Charlie Road, and it was here Megan's body was removed from her car and thrown over a four-foot brick wall. At 9.51pm, the car arrived at its final destination, Loughborough College's fitness centre car park. However well he thought his plan was going up until this this point, it would make no difference because as soon as he entered the grounds, he would be caught on CCTV. When he arrived, said CCTV footage would also capture the moments he disposed the rest of the heavily blood-soaked evidence in nearby bins, along with him getting changed into some new clothes. It's strange to think that a man who would attempt to outsmart the eventual police investigation would be so outlandish to dispose of the evidence in such a public place. Maybe it was the fact that the summer holiday was fully underway, so next to no one would be in attendance at the college, or maybe his ego was so inflated he thought that making it so obvious would make the evidence harder to find. But... As you will soon find out, determined family members and detectives would solve this case within days. What a surprise. Leaving the college grounds, Ross made his way towards Loughborough Town Centre, a rough 15-minute walk. From here, he called for a taxi and made his way home. In a final bid to attempt to cover his tracks, he made one last phone call 
leaving this voice message. Hello, oh, babe, it's Ross. Um, what, I'm just worried about you. I haven't rang back or, you know, text me or anything. Um, I don't know, it's probably nothing. Probably friends dead or fell asleep. But, uh, yeah, I'm just worried, that's all. I had a fun time earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Ross showed no remorse in the fallout of the murder. From attempting to dispose of the evidence to leaving a nefarious voicemail, his actions up until this point showed that he was a cold-hearted killer, with some experts believing he could go on to kill again. Take a listen to what he did when he arrived back home and see what conclusion you come to. For roughly two hours after that voicemail was left, Ross began to browse the internet for serial killers and murderers, just upstairs from the room where he murdered Megan only hours earlier. But thoughts of getting caught also crossed his mind. Who cut your hair in prison and how much do you pay? You could say then that his internet usage was a glimpse into his sick, twisted mind. After soaking up all the content relating to murder, he opened up a pornographic website of the extreme kind. Analysis of his PC showed that he was on there for roughly 17 minutes. I think we all know what took place over those moments. As the sun began to rise on August 7th, 2021, John Lubra, Megan's brother, received a frantic phone call from his parents. Have you seen Megan? She said she was only going out for a few hours with someone called Ross from work. Calm down, calm down. I'll give her a call now. Worried, but trying to keep a level head, John sprung into action first calling Megan's phone, but to no avail. So he, along with one of Megan's friends, drove to Ibstock, remember that's where her workplace was, in a bid to at best locate her car. Once again, efforts failed. The Warwickshire police were informed of Megan's disappearance, and as some of you may know, with Megan being a non-vulnerable adult, they wouldn't get involved in a search at first, but they did assist with family inquiries. After AMPR leads were followed, the police alerted Megan's family that her car had been spotted on one of their their cameras on Nanpanton Road. This would have been minutes after Megan's body had been dumped on Hermitage Road. So, John made his way over to Nanpanton Road, he canvassed the area, but there was still no sign of her car. Exhausting his search efforts, he switched tactics and decided to locate her phone instead. As you know, hours on from her disappearance, it was still turned on because it was ringing. However, there was a slight problem. After contacting Apple to see if they could locate Megan's phone, John was told that the team who specializes in doing so weren't going to be in until Monday the 9th. But after figuring out he could do it himself via Megan's iCloud login details, there was finally a break in the case. A signal had been emitted from a country lane, you guessed it, Hermitage Road. Family and friends rushed to the area to find the phone, but the location wasn't specific, so it wasn't going to be an easy job. The Warwickshire police were called in for assistance. The search went on for hours, but it was eventually found by a police officer deep inside a large overgrown hedge, surrounded by brambles at the side of a field. When police managed to get into the phone, there were tens of messages and calls from none other than Ross McCullum. This new revelation, along with the name Ross, being mentioned to police as the man Megan was going to meet just before she went off the radar meant he was the number one suspect. Initially, a kidnapping inquiry was opened, and it wouldn't take police long before they could locate Ross. A quick look through the chat history showed that the pair had worked with each other, so off the police went to Ibstock Brick and obtained Ross's personal details. By 6.45pm on Saturday the 7th of August 2021, less than a day on from when Megan was last seen, police attended Ross's home address to take him in for questioning. However, he wasn't home at the time. Hi, is that Ross? Hi, it is Ross, yeah. Hi Ross, my name's Mia, I'm a police officer with the uh, Warwickshire Police. Hello. Um, we've just come to your mum and dad's house. Um, we're just looking for Megan, she's been reported missing. Have you well, seen her yeah. at all? She came on Friday, I've been, talk I've been trying to call her loads. Have um, you? She came, on she came on Friday for about an hour. Yeah. Then she, she left about nine-ish. Okay. I went to went to McDonald's. Yeah. And then she just gave me a call or a text when she got home. She never she never did. She never did. Okay. Um so you haven't seen her since yesterday about was it half nine you said? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Okay. And where are you at the moment? I'm in Loughborough right now. You're in Loughborough. Okay. What are you up to yeah. in Loughborough? Sorry? What are you up to in Loughborough? I'm just having a few drinks in Loughborough. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK. No worries. Um, whereabouts are you? Um, you know, the Griffin 
Um, I'm a Warwick officer, so I have no idea whereabouts uh, anything is, but uh, I can sure find it. Is it the Griffin, is it? It's right next to Stainsbury. Loughborough. Okay. Near Stainsbury. Do you know the road name or anything like that? Um, I don't, if I'm honest with you, I can't walk down there now as we speak. Yeah. Okay. But, are you in a are you in a relationship, you and Megan? Yeah, well, yeah, we've been seeing each other. She's HR at work. I work with her. Yeah. Um, we've been seeing each other. Yeah. For about a month, and um, yeah, we're glad her out this weekend. Yeah. Mum and dad are out. Had a mum and dad are out the house. I'm supposed to be going around, but she never turned up today. We're supposed to be here like twelve o'clock. Right. And. Did she say anything of where she might be going or where she might be? She said she, 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 all she said was she was going to go to, she, she's not like going to McDonald's on my own to get like a vanilla milkshake. Yeah. That's it. And she didn't say where she'd be going today, all she said is that she'd meet you. Well, no, she said she said she couldn't stop mine. She was going to stop last night, around mine, but she said she couldn't. Um, what? How so come she didn't she stop? Said, just, just being nosy. Sorry? Sorry? Bear with me one second, sorry, my sergeant's just ringing. Go ahead, Sarge. Will do, no worries. I'm just speaking to Ross on the phone at the moment. Um, I'll give you an update shortly. Yep, yeah, already done. Sorry, Ross. <laughs> so, uh, just my sergeant ringing me. Um, so she said that she couldn't stop last night. Did she say why she couldn't stop? No. Well, when I texted her to say if she wanted to, she said she uh, couldn't. She never went into detail. No. She just said she couldn't stop, and then she came round after I that. Think, I I think it's because her and my dad didn't know that I was going to be coming round. Okay. And I don't think she um, wanted them to know. Okay. Have you not, not heard anything from her at all? Nothing at all. I've sent her about, that sounds really creepy, I've sent her about 15 WhatsApp messages. Or she said she was going to call me when she got home or text me or something. I've sent her loads of like, WhatsApp and like, I've rang up loads. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you're obviously worried about her. Yeah. But she's on to she's lovely. She has. I work with her, she's HR, she's a really nice person. Yeah. But I am really worried. Have you known her for a long time? I've known her for a couple of years. Um, and we started seeing each other. So I started seeing more like yeah. three months ago. Yeah. Like three months ago we really started seeing each other. Yeah. But then when we started, um, it was going to come quite... Well, she's got a house in Ipstark and it's going to be... It's going to be a bit more serious, you know what I mean? Yeah. OK. Um, so... Uh, do you know if she, I mean, I know you say you've gone to Loughborough, does she know anybody in Loughborough? Not that I'm aware of, maybe, I don't know, she has, she's got loads of friends, I don't know. Not, not that you're aware yeah. of, okay. Um, okie dokie, and do, 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 do. what vehicle do you drive, Ross? Sorry? What vehicle do you drive? My what, company? What, no, what car do you drive? I don't drive. You don't drive? Okay. No, I don't have, I don't have to drive. Oh, bless you. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I appreciate I've probably ruined your night out now by worrying me. Um, no, honestly, I was worried anyway. I wasn't really on a proper night out, I wasn't. No. I was trying to get out. I was really, like, worried earlier. I was probably yeah. on the dad out. Yeah. Okay. It's not like her to do it. It's not really, it's really, I don't know if she's spoken to her family. It's not like her to do this. No, they're really worried about her as well. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, are you planning on coming home soon? Uh, I'll, be, I'll be home tonight. Um, I can, well, I can go, I'm at Sainsbury's now. You're at Sainsbury's now? Okay. In Loughborough. Okay. All right then. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I've just got some other bits to do. I need to speak to my control room and stuff like that. Are you planning okay. on staying there for a bit then, are you? I can come back whenever you want me to. I can, just get, I can get a taxi or my, my dad can bring me home. Yeah, okay. Um, let me give you a ring in five minutes. I just need to sort some details out and stuff, and um, I'll give you a ring back if that's okay, Ross. Okay. 
Okay, thank you very much. All right, no worries. I'll speak to you shortly. Thank you. Thank you, bye. Ross's father arranged for him to be picked up from Loughborough later on that evening, and by 11.30pm, police were once again back at the address to take Ross in for questioning. What initially began with a kidnap inquiry would soon turn into a murder investigation, though, after Ross made this confession to police. I'm DC Gallagher from Warwickshire Police. Um, at this moment in time, we have reason to suspect your involvement in the disappearance of Megan Newbury, uh, and as a result, I'm arresting you on suspicion of kidnap. So you do not have to say anything, no matter how you defence, if you don't have mention one question or something which you may later rely on in court, anything you do say may be given in evidence. So I'm just going to pop some handcuffs on you, all right? You can, I'll put these on first. Yeah, that's fine, no worries. Can you feel that, yeah? Yeah. We've got a bit of room in it. Okay. okay. In relation to Megan, can you tell us where she is? You got something in your ear? What is it? Okay. Ross, in relation to Megan, can you tell us where she is? Say again. Talk down the police station. Can you tell us? Can you tell us here? Just quietly. Woodhouse Eaves. What is that? Near Loughborough. What is it though? What kind of location is it? Charlie Road. Charlie Road. Whereabouts? In the library. Okay. Is she alive? No. Okay. Right. Do you want to come with us? Yeah. Yeah. She's hidden by all the leaves at the minute. It's Steph, mate. Drive down. Found her. Um, if you get a chance, can you point to one side? Your yeah, um, just let her know where we are. Um, just drive straight down the road to where we've stopped. Three, four, just cancel my panic alarm now, please. Just down here, Sergeant. See your legs. legs. Oh, okay. Looks like she has a lot of top on. It isn't clear whether Ross told police where Megan's car was, but only three hours after being arrested, the car was located. Given all the evidence stacked up against him and his own confession of knowing where Megan's dead body was, it led to a murder charge being placed against Ross. However, only weeks later, he would go on to plead guilty to manslaughter on the grounds that he lashed out at Megan as the result of a sexual encounter. This, in turn, triggered an episode of PTSD, which would be his defense when the trial swung around because if you didn't guess it by now, that plea wasn't accepted by the prosecution, and so he would have to go on trial. In a nutshell, Ross's defense, as you've just heard, was that an episode of PTSD led him to kill Megan. He said the PTSD emerged due to him being raped multiple times as a young teenager. One of the perpetrators, allegedly Stephen Beadman. Stephen had been handed a life sentence back in 2016 for the rape and murder a 15-year-old schoolgirl, Kaylee Haywood. This story was actually corroborated by a work colleague at the trial. Six months before the murder took place, Ross opened up to him to tell him what had happened. Nothing specific, but just the fact that he was raped as a young teenager. However, Stephen died due to a cardiac arrest in 2021, so he was never taken in for questioning in relation to this case, nor would he have gone on trial. It took the jury just 91 minutes to find Ross guilty of Megan's murder. He would going to be sentenced to life with the minimum term of 23 years in prison. I think it's clear to see that Ross had some kind of goal 
to attempt to become Britain's next serial killer. His actions after the murder back this theory. Sadly, Megan would have to fall victim in order for Ross to be caught though, and you can thank his sloppy decision making for that. Believe it or not, the police actually said, had it not been for Ross leaving the phone on and telling them where the body was, they more than likely would have never found any of them, or if they did, it would be years down the line. I would like to start by thanking our incredible family, friends and everyone who has offered love and support over these difficult 16 months. I would also like to thank the prosecution barristers Mr Kamei and Mr Pryor, as well as DI Jenny Heggs, DC Charlotte Mee and DC Kerry Potter, along with the officers from both Leicestershire and Warwickshire for their continued hard work. Also to the jury, whose verdict has thankfully meant a cold, cruel, heartless murderer has been brought to justice. It's difficult for me to put into words how it felt when it became apparent Megan was missing. We found her phone, or when we were told her body had been recovered. It's a feeling I wouldn't wish upon anyone. It's not a day that goes by where we aren't expecting her to walk back through the front door. We're a very close family, of which Megan was the glue that held us together. Our lives have been torn apart through this loss. I know how difficult it's been for my parents and sister to sit at court every day, listening to the web of lies spun by someone Megan not only knew, but whom she trusted, someone who clearly had no love for her at all. We're the ones now serving a life sentence. No amount of time in prison can bring Megan back. We have to carry on with our lives as best as we can, but Megan will never leave our thoughts. Meg was an exceptional person through and through. She was and is loved by all who knew her and was nothing but pleasant to those she came into contact with. She had a whole life ahead of her. She was about to buy her first home and was excited for everything she had coming up. She was so eager to start the rest of her life, she ended up losing the one she was living. Thank you, thank you guys.